Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills with an 83 through 86 Chevrolet Monte Carlo grill build. We're finally doing a video for all those Donk and G-Body fans out there. Pop the grill from the car and let's get started on cutting these bars out and removing the center section. And let's also be mindful with keeping as many of these mounting tabs as possible because making a custom grill does us no good if we can't install it. To do the rough cuts, I'm going to grab an open-ended saw blade. These are pretty cheap and easy to get, but very effective. I'm diving right into one of these vertical bars, and the saw is cutting through this with no issue. Try to cut close to the grill frame edge, but stay about a sixteenth of an inch away from the perimeter so that you don't cut into the edge. Similarly, when making the cut near the mounting point, Try to stay far away from the hole as you can and make the cut along the bar edge that's running across it. We're trying to keep as much of the tab as possible, but it's okay if a fraction of it's gone so long as the grill mounts back to the car properly. Here's a close up of one of the corners. These require a little bit more attention to detail than the other cuts in the center. The same principle applies to the corner mounting tabs. Try and keep as much of it as possible. When it comes to cutting the horizontal bar in the corner, it's a little tricky. You want to cut this super close to the edge so that the blade will pass through the small open slit next to the mounting tab. When you're getting close to cutting all the way through, slow down just a little bit so that you can control the cut better. These thicker support bars aren't really any different than the rest, they're just a little thicker. The blade will work through them just fine with only a few extra passes. Then repeat these cuts for the rest of the grill until the center part is all cut out. And once finished, lift out the center section and throw it away. There will be some remnants of the old bars on the frame, and to knock those down I'll grab my grinder and equip it with a 36 grit sanding disc. I'm not applying much pressure here, I'd say almost gliding over the nubs so that I don't sand down too far. The idea is to just get the old bar remnants to be flat with the rest of the frame so that we can get the mesh in there without needing to make extra cuts. With the beveled top edge, you'll need to take a couple angles of approach to contour it just right. Be careful around the area where the thicker bars meet the edge though. Those thick bars go all the way up to the face of the edge and it's somewhat easy to over sand the area if you're not careful. The sides are the same, and this is a great angle showing just how careful you need to be. I'm only sanding the inside edge and nothing more. It's even okay just to leave a little bit on these thick bars and then come back and sand it by hand if you don't feel comfortable using power tools to get the job done. Also, be mindful of those corner mounting tabs. You don't want to damage them during this process. Thankfully, my sanding disc is ever so slightly slim enough where I can fit it into the gap by the edge, but that might not be the case for everyone doing this mod. Afterward, I'll grab some 80 grit sandpaper and knock down any remnants of the bars further. At this point, you'll also notice the chrome starting to sand off where the bars were. And that's fine, but if you plan on keeping the front of the frame chrome, use caution on how you're holding and using the sandpaper. Consider taping it off if you want to keep the chrome. Here's a quick look after I've got the first bit of sanding done. Most everything's relatively flat. All the mounting tabs are in good shape too. The big glaring issue we have right now is with the gaps on the top and the big gaps on the sides and the lower gaps. I'm not sure structurally how well this will hold up, so let's reinforce these gaps. This starts by using some tape to temporarily bridge these gaps. We'll be using this surface to dispense some epoxy onto and then remove later. It's best to have the tape line overlap a solid half inch or more because there will be some spillage. With the sides, be sure to have full coverage on those big gaps. We don't want any of this epoxy leaking through and running all over the place. To do the repair, I like using Plyo Grip Plastic Repair number three though other epoxies that are formulated specifically for plastics can be used in its place. The reason I like using this one specifically is that it cures fairly quick and it's thick enough to not easily run compared to others that I've used. I just dispense enough to fill the opening and a pinch extra on top and then I run a spreader over top of it to even out the coverage. You can leave it being just a little high and don't try and flatten it out all the way because it will settle a little bit as it cures. With the sides, a little bit more is needed to be dispensed since these openings are larger. 
Be careful as to where this is being spread though, because it will be difficult to sand out of the corner if you start pushing it around towards those mounting tabs. Ideally, just try and keep it somewhat contained to just the area that's being repaired on the side edge. I'll let it cure for about 30 minutes and then come back and remove the tape. While the front should be well covered, there will be some small gaps on the back where the tape was, so let's take care of those areas next. I'm going to go back in and fill the back with more epoxy to make sure that there's good coverage all around the grill. Using a spreader will again help even out the coverage. Also, the tolerances on the outer part of the grill are much smaller than the inside of the grill, so I'd suggest not overdoing it here. I started working on the mesh piece while I let this cure, and then came back to start sanding down this flush with the grill edge again. This 36 grit disc makes short work of knocking down the epoxy, but don't expect it to have a nice smooth finish. It's okay to have a little bit sticking up because we can hand sand it down fully flush with a sandpaper that isn't as aggressive as this. This 80 grit sandpaper that I'm using here is also quite aggressive, but truth be told off camera, I re-sanded it down later with some 180 grit and then 320 grit. Those big grip papers just gouge the plastic too much to later get a good paint job on it. So expect to spend some time going through finer grits for good results. Using a sanding block like what I'm showing here will also improve results. These are designed to keep your edges straight. And since this grill is pretty much one big rectangle, then it's important to keep everything all squared up. These side edges seem to take a little bit more time than what you'd expect. Since they're a bit tight on space, it makes it hard to get a wide sweeping motion on the sander. And with the sanding block, you don't have the room to make a long sideways stroke as like what you might want to do. There's going to be a little epoxy overhang and you'll want to use the grinder to get that back flat again. No need to overthink this part. Just get the back flat and straight and you'll be good to go on it. Okay, well, here's my frame so far. Most everything's looking straight and flat with all the tabs intact. If I was keeping the front face chrome, then I'd tape off the chrome and paint the inside. Instead, we're going to be painting this whole thing. So let's dive back in and strip off all the chrome. Of all the things that are most tedious, stripping chrome has got to be near the top of this list. This of course will eventually be worked down through all the grits to get a nice smooth finish. I spent a lot of time on this. As a matter of fact, I think that there is probably more time into this step than everything else put combined. At this point, I'm only showing it about an eighth of the way done. So let's just fast forward a little bit and voila, it's all stripped and partially sanded down with some finer grits. Let's take a little bit of a break from the sanding for a moment and focus on the mesh piece. This is our triple weave mesh and we have it available on both silver and black on our website in the link above and in the description. I made a template first from cardboard and then transferred it over to the mesh. At some point, I'll make a whole video about how that process works, but let's see how this one fits. I'm not gonna say that this fits perfect because it's not, but it's good enough to move forward. Let's flip this around so we can get a temporary hold going between the mesh and the frame. And if you have some clamps, that'll be your best bet to get this type of mesh to hold onto the frame for you. Technically, zip ties could work in a pinch, but I'd highly recommend the clamps for this woven mesh. When we have it clamped up, we're looking for a nice, consistent gap on the top edge. The bottom edge, we want to tighten up and have much less of a gap. And consistency with the edge is important here to have it look squared and symmetrical. Let's get this plyo grip out again and use it to bond the mesh to the grill. Getting this angled in just right can be quite tricky. Since I'm working with the face down, I need to make sure to not have any drip through the front. The plyo grip is ideal here because it's firm enough not to run on me. And if you get a spreader on it quick enough, I can draw it back away from the front. Let this cure and then remove the clamps. The mesh should structurally be firmly in place, but I don't like the look of these gaps that we have in the coverage. Let's dive back in quickly and touch those up. Also, if there's any uneven spots, this might be a good time to add a little epoxy to the area and level it out a little bit. In this close-up, you can see me using the spreader to flatten out the application so that we're going to be left with a nice, consistent height. 
When it's all painted up, we won't see much of any of this when there's a shadow on it. But when the sun hits it, we also want to have a nice look and consistent all the way through. I let this cure up one more time and we now have the grill that's almost finished. All I need to do is give it a paint job and we're going to be blacking out the whole thing. I'll make one more pass over it just to make sure that everything's nice and smooth and then take it to the paint shop. With the magic of editing, BAM! Here's the finished grill that's ready to be installed. This gloss black looks like it's dripping wet and the triple weave is such a great look on these old cars. Here's a quick look at how this grill should appear installed on the 83 through 86 Monte Carlo. There's a few different ways to build these types of grills, but I've just about wrapped up the essentials on this one. If you like this video and want to see more grill builds like this one using different techniques, please let me know and thanks for watching.